polymers are everywhere. We're surrounded by them every day, everywhere we go. In fact, in the natural world, they've been around since the beginning of time. Silk, rubber and DNA are all examples of natural polymers. They can be man-made too. Polymers are used to make the clothes that we wear, the tires on our bikes and cars, contact lenses, teeth fillings and shoes. You use polymers every day, probably without even realizing it. For almost all the parts of the modern trainer rely on polymers, from the upper part of the shoe to the sole. The soles are made of rubber, a natural polymer, and the laces are made from cotton or nylon, which are both man-made polymers. The synthetic leather used for the upper part of the shoe is also a polymer. In fact, polymers are used in a wider range of applications than any other material available to man. A particularly clever type of polymer is known as a smart polymer. Smart polymers have been developed by scientists and are now being used in cutting-edge technology that has changed the way we live our lives. What do you think these and this might have in common? Amazingly, both disposable nappies and a special firefighting technique use exactly the same technology to do their job. It's a superabsorbent polymer that connects the two. A superpolymer is a type of smart polymer known as a hydrogel. So, what are hydrogels and superabsorbent polymers, and how exactly do they work? A superabsorbent polymer is a special kind of hydrogel which is able to absorb a very large amount of water, often hundreds of times its own weight or volume in water can be taken up. And not all hydrogels have this property. Um, some hydrogels, for instance, the ones which are used in soft contact lenses, they swell up a little bit and they become soft and flexible and hydrated by the water, but they don't have this ability to take up very large amounts of water. A superabsorbent polymer works by absorbing water from the external medium surrounding it. And first of all, water molecules enter the gel in order to hydrate the polymer chains, and that makes them mobile, and so they can begin to move around in the gel structure. And once that's happened, negative charges on the backbone of the polymer gel to repel one another, and that forces the polymer chains apart, causing swelling. If we cut open uh, a nappy, we, we can shake out the granules of superabsorbent polymer and collect them. And if we then add water to those, we can watch it swell up very rapidly as the water is absorbed by the superabsorbent polymer gel. And if we tip the beaker over, we can see that the, the superabsorbent gel granules are relatively dry and firm, and this is what you get inside the nappy structure. But how did this scientific phenomenon, which has transformed baby care and baby's comfort, find itself being used in the dramatic world of firefighting? A few years ago, a fireman attended a fire in which an entire house was destroyed, all except for a used disposable nappy. He realized that a substance inside the nappy had prevented it from burning, and later on that that substance was a hydrogel. Developing this hydrogel for use in firefighting, the fireman found that spraying the gel into the path of the fire would put the fire out. At Morpeth Fire Station in Northumberland, firemen have been getting to grips with this new technology. The firefighting gel, we actually get it as a powder, a, a crystal form, and it's a superabsorbent polymer, uh, which we mix with water in a backpack, about 25 grams to 20 litres of water. And what it effectively does is it makes the water turn into a thin form of gel, which makes it stick to things more readily. Rather than attacking the fire itself, we spray ahead of the fire, and because it's a gel, it sticks to the items, for instance, the brush or to the blades of the grass so that when the fire gets to it they're already wet and water is the most effective firefighting medium taking the heat out of the fire this means that the water is actually sitting there ready for it when it gets there the difference between firefighting gel and water effectively is none as in so much as they're both water it's has then evaporated or stays there that's the difference if you put water itself then as the fire approaches where the water area is the water will start to evaporate which is how it puts the fire out but it does it before the fire gets there the other thing is some of it will run off and disappear into the soil, which is of no use in tackling the fire. The firefighting gel, alternatively, makes the water stay there. Not only does it stick to the item so it's still there when the fire gets to it, it slows the water molecules down anyway, so it slows down the rate at which they evaporate, so there's more of the water there when the fire gets to it. 
What we do with the granular powder is we add it into a backpack. We do this by, first of all, putting some water in the bottom of the backpack, then pouring in the powder and giving it a shake. It then forms a hydrogel. We add more water until the backpack's full. Again, give it a quick shake, and then we take it out and we spray it ahead of the fire. We use this firefighting gel to fight fires predominantly in the rural areas, which will be in grass, heather, low brush. And it's particularly effective there because of the speed of travel of the fire and the fact that it's difficult to extinguish normally. We can go ahead of it. It can be used in any sort of fire, but it's most effective on those. So, is this the answer to all our firefighting problems? There is one area which restricts the use of fire gel, and that's in the use of seawater. You have to use fresh water, whether it's clean or dirty. The problem with seawater and fire gel is that the chemical process that the polymer undergoes in forming the solution, which makes it into the long straight stretch because of the negative charged ions repelling, the salt in the salt water actually reverses that process and turns it back into a coil. So the water no longer has that gel, it just turns back to water with a powder in it. Discovering this new application for a technology already used in babies' nappies has changed the face of firefighting. And it's thanks to the amazing absorption abilities of superabsorbent polymers and the chemists who designed them that firemen can now tackle the serious business of forest fires.